Alright guys, I want to make a little addendum video for 2011 and newer Ford vehicles. And this will be quick tip number three, I believe. And what it has to do with is the new charging system monitors on these new ones. They have actual amp clamps on the positive and negative battery. And they monitor the battery health a lot more closely on these. Um, as you can see, we got battery age. We got state of charge. We've got uh, the actual amperage coming in and out, displayed in a negative or positive value in the very top there. And then we can monitor the generator for mechanical and electrical faults now. So it's a lot of communication back and forth instead of being a regular PCM controlled um, charging system like they've had for years, where um, they basically use the temperature of the battery and stuff like that to uh, basically go through an algorithm of what's the best charging voltage um, at that rate. So for instance, uh, you know, the battery when it's cold and when it's hot has different resistance values, so they'll adjust the voltage based on that to get the most efficient charging uh, possible. Now with the 2011's on, we're going a step further and we're going based on uh, current state of charge, battery temp, and uh, and of course amperage and we're really going to watch it and what they're also going for with this, the main reason it's in there is for fuel economy. So you'll see we'll start it up here, I'll show you guys some amperage and then um, and then it'll actually once we get a satisfied uh, level of state of charge we are going to see that it's going to drop off well below the 12.65 volts of a regular battery and definitely below the 13.5 to 15.5 which is a normal range for uh, charging voltage. It basically knows so much about the battery that it knows we don't need to keep that alternator on all the time. So it's going to cut it off which means it's going to cut down the, the actual field to how strong the field is for the magnets on there which if it cuts power to it the field just got weaker, so that means it's a lot less drag on the, uh, you know, the whole on the engine itself. So we're gonna start it here. Whoa! And you're gonna see that we got we went way down negative in the amperage in the very top row there, and that's because you know I'll start in it, and that's the inferred battery temperature. And then it's going to go through and it's going to charge the battery back up from uh, us starting it, obviously. You pull a lot of amperage out of that battery for starting it. And then it's going to go to a point where it starts going well below 13 volts. Now this one, I just changed the battery uh, in it. So it says battery age of zero, and that's in uh, days. So we'll see here eventually. Once it stabilizes and... Um, it's happy with the state of charge of the battery it'll actually cut that alternator off and uh, this can be confusing if you don't have a scan tool to watch now the big thing we usually have before was generator you know voltage desire and if it's you know wants 12 volts then it's gonna get 12 volts here we go see it's going down into it and you can see we're pulling more than we're putting in we're pulling 14 amps instead of putting it in and now we're into the milliamps and you can see it'll get down to 12.2, 12.5. Now that's going to be very confusing if you go in and you do a regular alternator voltage test. Let the engine run for a little bit and then you, oh, I'll put a voltage meter on there. Oh man, it's 12.5. You got to put a $400 alternator in there. Nope. That's what it wants. It's, it doesn't need any more charge into that battery. So it's cutting the alternator off. Now, my test that I displayed before in the previous video for load testing it up, for loading the alternator up, that is still valid. Watch, I'm going to turn the headlights on and the system's going to come right back. And as long as you have a load where it's outgoing amperage like that, rear defrost, blower motor, um, in your headlamps, it will keep the voltage up so it keeps the amperage going in. Um, right now, we got very minimal amount going out of the battery. You know what? Let's say two, six keeps jumping around a little bit. So it's not freaking out about, it, and it's keeping the voltage low. You can see we're at twelve point two, or basically we're just cut off. That thing is totally cut off right now, and uh, it's just sitting there, 
not needing any charge, and we're not really pulling a charge from the battery. So watch, I'll, I'll put the headlamps on, and you'll see my test is still valid. We're at 12.3, it's totally cut it off. Headlamps on. And it's responding, it's building it back up. Now we're into that regular voltage range. And blow our motor on. Maintaining. Let's put a uh, rear defrost on. Reacted initially to the new load, and now it's back to that 13.5. Now these PCM based charging systems will also run at a lower voltage, and it's all proportionally based what's best voltage for that battery range and state of charge. So I just want to give this quick tip that on the 2011 and newer Fords, we have a fancy battery mo battery monitoring system, not just a PCM control alternator. We have a, a, a actual battery monitoring system, and when you change the battery on these, the actual uh, engine battery, you have to go into the with the Ford scan tool and actually reset it so the battery age goes back to zero. So it recognizes there's a new battery and it starts learning based off of that. So hopefully this is a very good visual aid in just how the system works. It's all really based on uh, getting the most battery life and of course fuel economy. So the new ones you gotta watch out for. You can't just uh, throw a multimeter on there and say oh, 12.3, 12.2 alternator's done for. Not so on the 2011 and newer. You need to actually look and see what it's commanding.